Hello and welcome to the Meaning Project podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Daniel A. Franz. As always, thank you for this opportunity to bring a little bit of mental health and meaning to your day. So as this podcast is released, we'll be well past Halloween into moving into the month of November. The day this is released, hopefully I am somewhere traveling north on I-65 coming home from the annual Alabama golf trip, feeling invigorated and not broken and sore. But time will tell. I will let you know next time. But because of all those things, you know what time it is. I know what time it is. Most therapists know what time it is. It's time to start talking about cold and flu season, seasonal affect disorder, and the holidays. Um, Look, I'm not qualified really to talk much about cold and flu season. I can throw some ideas out there to help you protect your physical health. But it it was interesting. Uh, We were sitting around uh, us group of therapists yesterday talking about, yeah, after Halloween, it is that time of year where we start talking about SAD, seasonal affective disorder. And I know for me, uh, as well as the other therapist, we do start um, some good holiday preparation because the holidays can be difficult times. They're, they're supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year. Uh, but for many of us, for different reasons, they can be difficult. But first, as promised, let me tell you a little bit uh, about maybe my experience with cold and flu season. Um, first of all, as we know from uh, our COVID history, zinc is such a good nutrient to add to our diet. And maybe that's the other thing is to focus on our nutrients. You know, this can be a good time of year to step away from fast food and unhealthy foods and really look towards uh, what kind of fresh greens and veggies and fruits and, and proteins we can get in our diet. Because we know healthy eating can definitely protect us from clo- a cold and flu. Um, exercise is a great thing to uh, help keep us healthy. A little bit more difficult to get outside, but plenty of exercise weights or yoga or treadmill or stationary bike can be done inside building up a sweat getting warm working out all of those toxins uh, can definitely prevent the onset of viral or bacterial different kinds of infections in our lungs and chest cold flu etc of course uh, as i've talked before i'm a bit of a fan of self-experimentation unfortunately Uh, My physician is, I mean, a bigger fan. Well, she likes to experiment on me. I'm not sure she uh, is a big a fan of self-experimentation. I should really check into that. Uh, Last year, she had me. I wish I could find it. I think I still have some left. It was this awful tasting African root in a liquid Uh, Ugh! I would dilute it in in a glass of water every morning and it's still was just, it was like i can't even describe what it was like appropriately um so this year uh a a therapist friend a massage therapist recommended i think this is more for anti-inflammatory purposes but it feels pretty healthy in my in my yeti here today i've got a mixture of uh ginger root fresh ginger root because that's a lot of fun um with some lemon slices a little bit of honey and then, uh, let's see, what else? Turmeric. And, oh, I had some cayenne pepper because I like things a little spicy. Um, pour that. I put that into a jug, put hot water over it for a while, and, and let that all kind of seep together. And uh, then pour cold water over it. And it's a, it's a pretty tasty treat. And it, it tastes like it's supposed to be healthy for me. So we know ginger and turmeric are great things for us. And lemon juice can't be bad. So delicious and a little spicy a little bit much for this early in the morning recording a podcast um the the point being you know african roots and and ginger tea and all this kind of stuff many forms of tea warm drinks there are things we can do that we know are good for our health but that can also fight cold and flu season get out there talk to your physicians see what they're experimenting with or you know make make good decisions with self-experimentation little decisions not big things but you know see what you can find that might help you fight off cold and flu season this year and speaking of working with your physician uh when we talk about seasonal affect disorder um look it doesn't have to be 
uh, a diagnosed depression disorder. All of us, I would say all of us, especially us living uh, in, in the northern latitudes, feel the change of the seasons as the leaves begin to change. What a beautiful time of year, a nice, warm 50 or 60 degree day, the sun shining, the leaves are changing colors and beautiful reds and oranges and yellows and, and the smell of, of the leaves. It's just a beautiful time of year. And then where I live, it changes in about 30 seconds to uh, cold and rain blowing all those leaves, not blowing, raining all those leaves onto the ground. They're wet and crunchy. They get your shoes wet and you start to get the sniffles. It's not fun. Um, and, and I certainly start feeling it in these next couple months. You know, we uh, uh, wake up in the dark. Um, for many of us, I know for me, many days I go home from work in the dark. It's a lot darker out. It's ironic. I, I was home from work early yesterday. Um, and, uh, I was doing some, working on some creative projects for the Victor Frankel meeting Academy. And it was about 5 PM. And I looked outside and thought, my goodness, it's a beautiful evening out. I don't see many of these. So I just kind of took the dogs out and decided to really embrace that. And that's a healthy thing you can do to fight seasonal affect disorder is when there is sunlight, yet as much of it as you possibly can, right? It's good uh, for our body's metabolism, for our circadian rhythms, for our sleep cycle. Get out there and, and get as much sun as you can while it's here because we know in a few months in the Midwest, um, there uh, you know, we can hit record amounts of gray and rainy or snowy days. And it, it, you might be a winter person, you might love the snow, um, but those gray days can be a little rough. One of the things, one of the supplements you can take to help during this time of year, please check with your physician first, get a good blood draw, check your vitamin D levels. Most of us through November, December, January, and February will be a little deficient in vitamin D. It's pretty easy to get a hold of. You can get it on Amazon, 5,000 unit uh, gel caps. I usually take 10,000 a day. Um, that's usually okay to do without um, approaching any toxicity. I think I've shared before. I've known some people to be put on 50,000 units a day. That would be uh, 10 of those gel caps. However, that needs that level needs to be monitored by your physician. That could uh, approach liver toxicity. Generally, the idea is you can take one to two of those gel caps a day uh, to help your vitamin D levels so that you know it, uh, vitamin D will help replace the sunlight that you're missing. But again, there's nothing wrong with checking in with your physician. Get a blood draw. See what your vitamin D levels are. One of the things I did this year is to check my cortisol levels. Um, and that wasn't fun. It was during a particularly stressful time of year. And uh, my cortisol level, if you'll remember, cortisol is the stress hormone that our body puts out when it feels like it is too stressed, right? When we are dealing with mental, emotional, physiological, or even spiritual stress, right? We're just not quite feeling, we're not dealing with life well. And that cortisol hangs around. Well, my cortisol levels were just outside of what we consider to be healthy limits. So I needed a big dose of chill the heck out. Um, and I have to admit, I probably didn't do a good job of that. I may have told you uh, this story recently. Um, my happy band of therapists and I, we get together. We try to get together on the first Friday of every month, have a little bit of lunch, uh, exchange ideas, and really um, do a little bit of self-care, right? Even therapists need therapy. And the last time we got together, I think it may have been September, um, it, it was not good. Uh, you know, everybody was achy and sore and not feeling well and stressed. And, uh, we all, you know, at the end we had to joke, like, we are so good at prescribing this stuff. We have to become better at doing it ourselves. So I, uh, I did work on lowering those cortisol levels, but, uh, you know, haven't checked them yet. I will. My point to you is go to your doctor, get a blood draw, check your vitamin D levels, check your cortisol levels, your hormone, all that stuff you know, cholesterol, make sure you are operating as optimally as you can 
And if not, you know, see what your physician might recommend, see what little self experiments they might offer you. And of course, you can always advocate for your own health as well. So when dealing with seasonal affect disorder, getting as much sunlight as you can when it is available, taking some vitamin D to supplement that. Lately, we have seen a uh, an increase on Amazon uh, and other retailers of um, light boxes, right? You can get, I mean, these are nothing fancy. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I had a, uh, a reptile, a series of reptiles in my college days. Um, I had a an iguana named Joey, who was uh, quite fun, uh, fun for all throughout uh, my roommates and, uh, and and the places we lived. Um, the point being, reptiles have had these light uh, light boxes or UV imitating uh, lights for a long, long time. And guess what? They're good for humans too. Um, we can use them throughout. You know, if you're just sitting at a desk recording a podcast, you should have a could have a sunlight on or watching TV, reading a book, relaxing, whatever it might be. These different um, light box sun imitators can be really helpful for seasonal affect disorder. Um, the ultimate, usually for me, I'm going to, again, another self-experimentation coming up for me. Two years ago, it was February. I'm in my office and it's it's a unique setup that I have a set of windows that when I work until 7 p.m., um, I like I just know. Well, right now, that client I see from six to seven, uh, we we joke like, yep, here it comes because we are ending in the dark. At some point, we will be getting at 6 p.m. in the dark and five or six months from now, uh, that will change and we'll start to get lighter. But during those few months, um, the absence of sunlight, the cold, the, the the different impacts on our natural need to hibernate. Uh, can be pretty depressing. And sometimes it is helpful to simply get away in the months of January or February. I know the little airport near me hops to Florida for about $200. Um, that's not a bad deal, um, uh, you know, just to get into some sunlight and some 80 degree weather when it's 20 degrees here. Um, we're not all of us can do that. Sometimes just, you know, a, a a small getaway, an internal getaway. Um, one of the therapists I work with does an awesome job. I love going into his office. He's got a TV there with just amazing scenery of, of beaches and, and warm mountains, not the cold mountains. Um, and it can be just really refreshing to take a look at that. It's not the same as getting away. It's not the same as a light box, but sometimes a vacation in our mind can be helpful. These are the different things that can help prevent to ward off that uh, the the downside of feeling the need to heart hibernate. However, if you feel you truly have a bad case of seasonal affect disorder, you can't get out of bed, you're missing days at work, you feel that thoroughly depressed, it's time to call a professional and talk to somebody and see if some talk therapy, some different kinds of, you know, I don't always encourage antidepressants, but some people during that time of year, they're necessary and helpful. And in small dosage for a short amount of time can be very effective. Seasonal affect disorder does not have to affect you. See what I did there? It doesn't have to effect, affect you. Um, there are ways to fight it. Vitamin D, get your blood checked, check your stress levels, sunlight as much as possible, getting outside, you know, even for some fresh air when you can. Uh, light boxes, getting away, all these, you know, as long as, as well as the things you use to fight uh, uh, cold and flu, right? Nutrients, exercise, uh, different self-experimentation and supplements, African roots, different teas. These things can all help your overall mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual health to prevent seasonal affect disorder. This is the time of year where I start talking to many people about the holidays. The most wonderful time of year is often the most stressful. Some of the reasons, uh, for many of us, traditions are changing. Family structures change. Grandma decides she doesn't want to host Thanksgiving anymore. Who's going to host Thanksgiving? You can bet it's not me. These are some of the things we deal with. 
um, changing traditions, recognizing, you know, it does bring in some existential questions as, you know, different family members um, do different things. We, we might have lost a family member that we now recognize. Um, and we spend time with family that we don't always see. And that can be stressful as well to recognize these things, to embrace them and recognize they're all part of the cycle of life, changing traditions and values, family structure changing. Hopefully you're lucky enough to maybe welcome new family members through marriage or childbirth or adoption or these different ways. And you get to spend time with those you truly care about. Of course, everybody has the weird uncle that has to be there, but you know, maybe you can find a way to embrace uncle Ron as well. It's not that bad. Um, but it helps to really set the expectations and prepare for this and not go into it blindly and not go into it intoxicatingly drinking to, I don't know. I just made that word up, right? Sometimes we have a tendency on Thanksgiving or our family Thanksgiving or Christmas to maybe imbibe just a little too much with the family holiday punch or whatever might wine, whatever might be available. And, you know, that can create some, sometimes some funny stories, many times unpleasant stories. So, you know, know your limits, know your limits with alcohol, know your limits with food. Everybody loves a good Thanksgiving feast, but there's no need to gain 20 pounds in one day and then feel miserable going into the new year. That's why we have new year's resolutions because we just eat too dang much through the holidays. But, uh, you know, know your limits, know your expectations, recognize, you know, the amount of time you can spend with people you don't spend time with all the time and overall make healthy and meaningful choices. I want to confirm, you know, may, maybe some of you don't realize this. Um, I feel as though I've, I've spoken about it every year of the podcast. And I know I speak about it at this time every year in my clinical office, um, even, even in business consultation, you know, recognizing this can be a difficult time for people. We expect it. We have the expectation for it to be the happiest time of year, but for many, it can be difficult in different ways. There are ways you can prepare for that. Embrace it. Recognize it. Find ways to enjoy it. Make meaningful choices. And that comes especially, we'll to be talking, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to the Christmas uh, holiday season of gift giving, right? You know, I say it every year and it's important this time of year as every time of year, experience trumps material. Engaging in experiences with your family and friends, um, indulging, buying experiences is far healthier than buying material. And so these are just some things you should be thinking about as we enter into and plan for the holiday season. They can be stressful. Find ways to enjoy them and make meaningful choices. I meant to open with this. My goodness, I can't believe I didn't forget. It's been on my mind through the entire podcast. Wanted to thank... Um, one of one of my favorite listeners uh, out there. Thank you so much for um, your email today about the past few podcasts and and the points you found helpful. Um, and and I would encourage any of you if you're out there and you find something helpful, please feel free to email me. I put my email out there. You are welcome to use it. It really is uh, honestly for me. It's heartwarming. It's 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 helpful. You know, to know that the work that I'm putting out there, that we are putting out there at the Victor Frankel Meaning Academy truly is being received in a, in a helpful and meaningful way. And so thank you for your kind words and for taking the time to send that email. And if we're having an impact in your life, feel free to email me, please. If we're having an impact, if this podcast is having an impact, share with other people. Um, let them know this good news that is out there, that logotherapy, the psychology of meaning, existential analysis. Um, as we've said, it's an idea whose time has come and it can just be so truly helpful. Um, hey, to, to, to catch that email, you can uh, hop over to my website, danielafranz.com, D-A-N-I-E-L-A-F-R-A-N-Z.com. We are just a short time away from launching our first program, Your Search for Meaning, at the Victor Frankel Meaning Academy. You can find out more about that at themeaningacademy.com. Come check out what Dr. Elise Cortez, Dr. Baruch Halevi, and myself are all putting together 
as we uh, prepare to share this information with you in, in just one more uh, big and meaningful way. So I think that's everything. If you have any questions about seasonal affect disorder, planning for the holidays, uh, you know, feel free to get in touch. And if you have questions about how to prevent cold and flu season in your life and your family, definitely go see your physician. As always, it's my pleasure bringing a little bit of mental health and meaning to your day. Thank you so much for taking the time to allow me to do that. Take care.